Unit 5.4 Dividing Polynomials In this class, we can learn two ways to divide polynomials. One is using long division, the other one is using synthetic division. And we are going to learn remainder theorem in this chapter 2. Polynomial long division is pretty much like our regular long division. But before we start, two terminologies that you have to remember. First, let me get my pencil first. So first, it is um, the quotient, another one is the remainder. So if I give you an example, say uh, 7, this is a regular long division divided by 3. So 2 right here, 6, 1, the remainder has to be less than the divisor. So this one is a divisor, and this one is the quotient, and this one is the remainder. Here's an example of using polynomial long division. We have a polynomial function divided by a divisor x plus 5, which is right here. And the first part of the quotient that we have is 4x. Now you may want to ask, how do I get the 4x? All you need to do is get the first term of the polynomial function here divided by x, which will give us 4x right there. Once we got the part of the co quotient 4x, we can multiply this part of quotient 4x with the divisor x plus 5, which gives us 4x squared plus 20x distribution. So 4x squared plus 20x, we put it right back here. Now we do the subtraction. So 4x squared minus 4x squared is nothing right here. 23x plus, I mean, 23x minus plus 20x, which gives us 3x. Now we bring down minus 16. After that, we just repeat the process of dividing by x to get the part of the quotient and then uh, multiplying and then subtracting. So the next step, same as the one that we just did before, we try to get the part of the quotient. In this case, right now, the remainder is 3x minus 16. So we pick the first term, 3x, we always divide it by x to get the quotient right here. And then once we got the quotient, we multiply the quotient with the divisor and to get this. And then we subtract this one by this one, subtraction right here, and this is the remainder. So in this case, after all these calculations, the quotients that we end up getting is 4x minus, I mean 4x plus 3, and the remainder is negative uh, 31. Now that we learn how to do the long division of polynomial functions, you may want to ask, why do we need to learn this? Well, the reason is to check factors. What do I mean by checking factors? I'm going to show it to you by a really simple example. If you have a number 6 divided by 2, and you got 3 right here, the remainder is 0. Once we know the remainder is 0, then we can conclude 3 and 2 are the factors of 6. So in other words, if after a long division of a polynomial function right here, if I have a divisor like this, and then I have a quotient like this, and then you end up the, re the remainder is 0, then we can say these two are factors of the polynomial function p of x. It is also known as the factor theorem, which means if you have a 0 as a remainder, it means the divisor and the quotient are the factors of the polynomial function. Here's an example. 
The question is to determine if x squared plus 1 is a factor of 3x to the 4 power minus 4x cubed plus 12x squared plus 5. According to the factor theorem that we've just learned, we know if we divide this polynomial function by x squared plus 1 and the remainder is equal to 0, then we can conclude x squared plus 1 is a factor of this polynomial functions. Here's the long division process. So after the long division, you find out the remainder 4x minus 4, obviously it's not a 0. Since it's not a 0, we can conclude the divisor x squared plus 1 is not a factor of this polynomial function. There's another way to divide polynomial function. It is synthetic division. In order to use synthetic division, the divisor must have only two terms only, like this, x minus k. k is a constant, x is the variable. Here is an example. So first, you have to write down all the coefficients in descending order. When you say in descending order, that means you pick all these coefficients and the constant term to put it right there. So 2, negative 7, negative 8, and 16. Look, if they don't have like square term right here, you still have to put 0 right here. So in other words, this in this position, you represent in this case x to the third power, second power, the first power, and the last one is the constant. Now we write the divisor. Remember, x minus k. So we're going to pick k right here. So k is 4. But if the factor is x plus 4, then this time remember, because the format is minus k, so the k in this time, it is negative 4. Alright. Once you set that, the format here represent the division sign, just like the long division like this. And then we try to do the division now. First, all you need to do is just pull down this number. I forgot one thing, it's always a plus sign here. That will make it easier for you to follow. So the first step is 4 times 2 here, which is equal to 8. And then negative 7 plus 8 equal to 1. And the next step is going to be 4 times 1, which gives you 4 right here. And then minus 8 plus 4 will give you negative 4. And the next step is going to be this one, 4 times negative 4, you got negative 16. And remember the plus. So 16 plus negative 16 will give you 0. And this part is the remainder. And this whole thing is the quotient. So if the remainder is 0, according to the th factor theorem, we know that this quotient is a factor. And this divisor, x minus k, is also a factor. So let me move this way away from you so you can see it. Not that we have the quotient, but we have to rewrite it in a proper format because all these number, these two numbers, other what uh, coefficients only so remember when we start off the whole division we start off power 3 but when after we divide by divisor right here we actually have a power down by 1 so in this case 2 actually go with x squared and 1 go with x to the first power and this is a constant term so that's why you end up getting the answer 2x squared plus 1x right here the 1 and minus 4 since the remainder is 0 you don't have to write anything in this case 
But if you have a remainder, say you have a remainder of three right here, say you have three as a remainder right here, so you have to add one more thing. Break down R, three, then you're done. The last part of this unit is remainder theorem. It provides us a quick way to find the remainder of a polynomial long division problem. Here's an example. If you are asked to divide this polynomial function by x minus 3, before you know remainder theorem, you probably use synthetic division like this, and then you find the remainder, which is 182. If you know remainder theorem, all we need to do is just to evaluate p of 3. Remember x minus 3, then this is k. In this case, k is 3. So all we need to do, instead of doing this synthetic division, we just evaluate p of 3, which equal to 3 to the fifth power minus 2, 3 to the third power minus 3 squared plus 2. So we just substitute 3 back to the original polynomial function. Then after you do this, you come up with 182 as well. But please remember, the major purpose of remainder theorem is not really find the exact value of the remainder. It just provides us a quick way to see if the remainder is equal to zero. If the remainder is equal to zero, then we can tell the divisor, in this case x minus 3, is a factor of the polynomial function. Then we can solve the polynomial equation quickly.